Alrighty then. Here's some more. Hi everybody and welcome back to Plastic Models by a Regular Dude and part number three of the Academy 132nd scale Sopwith Camel. Let's do a quick recap. In part two, I completed step one, which includes the rigging. And this is what I've got. Um, all I have to do is just, uh, once this cures all the way, just need to sand that down. I had a little bit of a seam going on there. So I'll, uh, I'll sand that down and we'll be good to go. So that concluded step one in video number two. Next up, we've got step three, four, and five, which is the engine, attaching the engine to the firewall, and then attaching that and the cowling to the front of the fuselage. Thanks to the magic of editing and uh, time and all that kind of stuff, the engine's already done. So all I need to do is uh, attach that right direction to this. So that's weird. I don't know if that's supposed to fit in there or not. But uh, I need to cut that part out right there, which is B9. So I'm going to cut those parts out. I'm going to cut out this cowling, I think. Get that all cleaned up and ready to go. I may not attach it just yet. I may wait until after it's painted. But we shall see. All right, here's what I decided to do. So I got this part glued on here. And it was going to take some clamping and taping, so I didn't put the spindle in. So I got that glued into place and then I punched this through. Now this you're actually supposed to leave free spinning and you just glue it in here, but I'm not going to be playing with the propeller. So I just glued it in place so it's nice and solid. And I did have to bore this out just very slightly using my exactoid knife. I just kind of spun it around there a few times to get it to where this would fit. Now, if you want your prop in a certain orientation, you might want to make sure that this little tab thing is facing the direction you want it. For instance, let me just, I'm gonna cut this off here. I'm not gonna worry about what it looks like just yet, but see there's like a, it's like a keyhole, so you want it at an angle you want to make sure that you uh, position your engine accordingly however I am NOT putting that on yet and I'm also not going to put the cowl on yet now one thing I did have to do to get this cowl to fit I couldn't get it to fit flush there's tabs that stick off of here and I just cut them completely off because these stick out far enough that they engage these tabs right here and it fits nice and flush all the way around. So I did that. So the other thing I did was I glued this, this in place here. It took a little bit of sanding to get it to fit really flush. There's a bit of a gap here, but it's going to be completely covered by the cowl, cowling, whatever you want to call it. So the next thing I need to do is I need to kind of sand this stuff smooth here. Uh, I'm not sure if there's supposed to be a seam there, but I'm going to assume there's not. So I'm going to sand all that nice and smooth and flush, right? All these seams. So I, when I glued it together, I made sure I got it as close as possible to being, you know, totally flush and lined up. So I'm going to work on that a little bit. Then the next thing I need to do since I've done this, which was step six, I'm also supposed, also supposed to glue the machine guns in, but I'm not going to do that. That's going to be one of the last things I do. So I'm going to work on this here. Then I'm supposed to do some more rigging through the lower wing and attach the um, tailplane and the uh, or horizontal stabilizer, whatever you want to call it, and the rudder 
and vertical stabilizer assemblies in place. And at that point, I'm also supposed to be gluing the lines in place, but that I'm not going to do that to like the very last thing. Uh, so they're going to be dangling for a while. So I'm going to work on sanding this for a while and uh, see what else I can do and then come back and we'll discuss it some more. All right, here's another quick note on this thing. Um, so I glued the horizontal stabilizer and the rudder and the I mean I got it but there's a few things at play here number one the holes in this part that fit on the pins number one they didn't line up with the pins and I ended up having to cut the back pin completely off and then the holes are huge and I probably should have filled them in before um, I glued it in place, but I didn't. I'll, I'll use some like Vallejo putty or something. But so that was kind of wonky. And, you know, I was able to get it. It should be quite level. But then this part here, the uh, vertical stabilizer and rudder. Um, there is not much surface area to glue on and boy it was it was touch and go it was just really kind of hard to uh get it to get it to stick but you know in the end i got it so no big deal so i'm gonna fill in that stuff then i need to glue this in place and i had to cut two pieces of uh easy line for rigging and I did the same as the others and I glued those in with um, super glue so we're good there so all I need to do is just glue this in place and uh, looks like it's just it's just gonna be level so that shouldn't be too big a deal so I'll glue that in place and then we'll be ready to move on to um, actually I think once I do that I'm not going to glue the upper wing in place until after I paint because it's just too, I've built one biplane in my life and it was a pain trying to paint that thing with everything glued into position. So I'll do that separately. <clears throat> but anyway, I'll work on that maybe work on some of those stuff and then we'll come back and do another, do another quick, uh, quick wrap up review kind of thing. All right, I need to uh, start working on the, I've got the um, upper color done. And for that, I used U.S. Olive Drab. Now, I know that's not right because it's supposed to be some S10 or something like that. But I don't have it, and I don't want to wait around for paint to come in. And this is close enough for the purposes of this kit, which is mainly an exercise in building a World War I aircraft, mainly um, rigging and stuff like that. So I know it's wrong, but that's what I did. The other side is a mix of uh, German Brown and Insignia White, both SMS colors as well. And I just didn't do a very scientific job of mixing it. Um, so I don't have any ratios or anything like that, but it's supposed to simulate the just doped linen of the wings. Here is the <clears throat> rest of the aircraft, same color. Um, so that is pretty much ready to go. So what I need to do next is I need to get the stuff ready to paint the... Um, the wood parts, the propeller, and all of these struts. Now for these struts, what I'm doing is I'm taking a little bit of, to me, a six millimeter wide tape, and I'm putting them on my alligator clips here that I use for painting. And what I'll do is I will cut each one of these off, and I will label them accordingly. 
Um, that way I can, because these are very, very similar in appearance, especially like these two here. I mean, I don't know what the difference is, <clears throat> but they need to be, uh, I don't want to take a chance of screwing something up. So I'm going to mark them. I'll clip one in here and I'm going to clip them by the ends because I'm going to, I'm going to paint these ends silver because in looking at photographs, it looks like the ends of these, uh, these supports, it looks like they are metal. So that's what I'm going to uh, paint them. Whether or not it's right, I don't know. I mean, this whole World War I thing is a total learning experience for me. But anyway, I'll clip them in there and label them accordingly. And that way I can spray them, get a nice even coat of paint on them. And then I can think about uh, getting some wood effects on there. So that's what I'm gonna work on right now. Labeling, clipping, getting ready for paint. All right, everything is um, painted on the sticks and awaiting some simulated wood grain. So I thought I, while I was letting that dry, I would go ahead and take care of the wheels. So what I did is using MRP Insignia Red, <clears throat> I painted the hub wheel portion of the wheels. <coughs> then I need to mask them off so I can paint the rubber portion. So what I did is using my circle cutter, I've demonstrated it, you know, a number of times on my channel, but you basically choose your size with this little dial here. This is, you loosen it, tighten it, slide it along the arrow pointing to the millimeters that you want. <coughs> set it down on some tape and cut it so I did that and I cut them just a little bit larger than the actual diameter of the wheel portion now something to consider here <clears throat> is since this is kind of uh, dish shaped um, it's not just gonna stick on there and cover that up <clears throat> so what I did is I cut the center out just with my um, X-Acto knife, made a straight cut on the edge, and then I'll peel it up. And <clears throat> just start Putting it in place. Like this, <clears throat> all the way around. And by cutting it, I can overlap it because it's obviously not gonna be the exact right size. So just make sure that's pressed down real firmly, <clears throat> just like on this side. Then using some Mr. Hobby, Mr. Masking Sol R. Simply. Brush it on thusly. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we are, once it dries, ready for paint. So then I'll stick this uh, Ta da ready to go. So now all I have to do is spray it <clears throat> with one of my mini, not many, I just have a few, tire black. Now <clears throat> I'm going to spray it tire black 
and uh, hopefully that's the uh, right color because I know back in the old days it seems like they had white sometimes for uh, rubber on tires but anyway I'm gonna spray that black <clears throat> and get that uh, taken care of and then I can start working on that simulated wood grain all right I got all the uh, wood stuff done except for on the fuselage so it's about time I peeled the masking tape off all right so the next thing i need to do is i need to do the wood grain on here so i think what i'm going to do though is i'm going to tape off this part here and here so it doesn't uh so it doesn't get all over everything so we'll see how that works all right so with them painted this that's what it looks like I'm really stoked so I'm gonna peel this stuff off of here and I'll spray a dull coat on here at some point because obviously those tires shouldn't be that shiny shouldn't be shiny at all because you know I don't think they used armor all or any of that kind of stuff back in the World War one there we go sweet stooped all right like usual on the machine guns i'm hollowing out the barrels um i use the point of my exacto knife and twirl it around to make a pilot hole then i use a drill bit a drill bit drill bit of appropriate size to actually make the hole and that helps just a little bit to make it look a little better and the drills I'm using in this case I'm using a 0.7 millimeter and uh, it's micro mark small tool specialist so good stuff that so I'm gonna assemble these and get them ready to paint and then that way I can install them on the aircraft all right so I've got all the wood the metal parts painted on the wood parts um, I've got the wheels done the upper wing lower wing well fuselage with lower wing uh, the machine guns are glued together they just need to be painted and yeah we're moving right along here so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call um, part three of this video complete so ends this installment of the Academy 132nd scale sop with camel so if uh, you have any questions comments hints tips concerns anything like that put them in the comments section down below if you haven't subscribed subscribe if you want to follow this and or others of my builds then uh, hit up uh, the old notification button so that's it for now thanks for watching plastic models by regular dude and I will see you all later